Well, Tom, I'm delighted to have this time with you today to get really into the depths of all the technical things around golf. And we know there's so much to cover, but it seems like a very sensible place to start is the fundamentals in the setup. Absolutely. I mean, when you learn to play golf, the first thing you have to do is learn to hold the club properly and learn how to stand to the ball. Right. If you can do those things, you've got half a chance of swinging the golf club properly. Because that's your connection to the club, isn't it? The grip is the one point that we actually connect to the club, so we've got to get that right. Absolutely right, yeah. And, you know, a common mistake that I find is that golfers will put the club right in the palm of their hands naturally and then what will happen then is you can't use the levers in your wrist to help the club release and create all the fluidity that we need to swing the club mm. so the first thing i say to people is we've got to get the club running through the bottom of the fingers on the left hand for the right-handed golfers mm -hmm. and the thumb pointing straight down on top of the grip and then straight away in that position we've got a neutral grip and our wrists can lever correctly and we can release with a nice square club face through the ball that's really interesting because with other racket sports, you do think about gripping it in the palm of the hand. And so I, I imagine a lot of our viewers are probably quite surprised to hear that. Perhaps uncomfortable actually to hear that, but I, I remember getting taught that very thing about gripping in the fingers first and almost learning to pick the club up just with the fingers. And then from there, you can start to wrap over the, the palm. So that's the first non-negotiable, non grip Absolutely. it in the fingers. Yeah. What else are we looking at? So once we've done that, and obviously the, the important thing to remember is if you're gonna throw a ball, you put it in the palm of your hand, you're not gonna get much release. We want it rolling down the bottom there. And we're gonna use these trigger fingers quite a lot here in the grip. So first finger and right thumb, okay? And that's gonna help us really create a nice release pattern through the ball okay so once the little fingers are in place here we've got the club running through the bottom of the fingers left thumb on and it's really important that the hands are connected okay they have to work together as one unit we don't want them separated and have a gap between our hands on the grip you have two options for this okay so you can either rest the little finger over that right first hand there that right first knuckle or you can interlock the hands like so okay there's no preference on that. They're, they're both right. Yeah. But I would say you should experiment with those two and figure out which one actually you prefer because the club has to feel comfortable in your hands. Definitely. I am a baseball gripper. Ooh. Okay. And I, I was, when I learned the game of golf, I, I actually, um, I'm trying to remember now, it was so long ago, but I overlapped um, Little Pinky on top of the index finger of my left hand. And I remember being taught at the time that that would allow the hands to work closely together and under pressure I wouldn't find my right hand coming in and yeah. they'd be a unit but then I developed this niggle in my wrist and I, I the only way I could strengthen the back of the wrist was to go into the baseball and I know that's quite rogue but I've I actually really enjoy it and like you say you've yeah. got to find what feels comfortable yeah. but I always make sure I've got connection between the hands so absolutely yeah. I suppose I'm still just sticking to the rules no you're okay because they're still working together and obviously you're a you're a trained skilled golfer so your timing is going to be a little bit more advanced than most so you're okay with that and certainly with the junior golfers at home it's okay to have that baseball grip there because what will happen then is they won't work together quite as well because they're not officially connected but the right hand will start to get a little bit more involved and I know in your technique you like to have your right hand releasing a little bit more to take some pressure away from the wrist injury yeah so that is logical um, I think what happens if you don't have an injury and when the junior golfers their hands grow they get bigger mm -hmm. you can then move into a more connected grip with either Varden or Interlock yeah but like I say you always hit balls and experiment with both because yeah. there's no right or wrong some people like the Interlock because it feels a bit stronger but then the overlap I think helps the club face control a little bit easier and, and that's the the name of the game as you rightly said the only connection point with us and the club is our hands on the grip yeah and as long as the hands on the grip are nice and neutral through the bottom of the fingers, then you can control the club face through the ball and ultimately control the direction of the flight. Okay, so I'm gonna run through those things. We've got it, first of all, we've got the club running through our fingers. Yeah. We've got nice connection with either the overlap or the interlock. 
Is there anything else that we need to know before we progress onto other aspects of this game? No, I think you know we should definitely talk about how the right hand sits. Now, something that I think is really important is that the first finger and the thumb, this is your trigger here, mm. and you can use that to release the same as you would throw a ball or skim a stone, as we mentioned earlier. So I like to feel that the, the pad of the thumb sits just over the grip here on the left hand side as you look down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's in, you have to ensure that that pad sits there. If it starts to sit over, like I see quite a lot, you lose the control of the club face. Whereas mm. the thumb here is very important to keep that face nice and stable through the impact zone. So finger and thumb on the right hand should be nice and close together. And the thumb should sit to the left of the grip as you look down as the right-handed golfer. That's a really subtle thing, actually. Mm. And it's amazing how much of a difference the thumb positioning on the golf club can make. Yeah. I often see people learning the game having that thumb wrapping round and I mean now obviously playing golf more regularly it feels very strange but tiny tiny little things can make a big difference at this oh, yeah. stage in our technique. Absolutely you know if the golf club can travel anywhere between 70 and 100 miles an hour with an iron coming through the hit yeah. you want to make sure your hands are in the right position to stabilize the club yeah and if, if they're off then obviously you're going to lose all of that and at high speed that's going to make a really wonky ball flight. Yeah. The other thing we should suggest as well, and, and this is a sort of drill that I would get people to go through, okay? Mm -hmm. So if we just rest the club here against your thigh and drop your hands down so they're hanging from your shoulder naturally, you'll notice that your hands are slightly curved in, mm. like so. So what we want to do is marry those hands together like that. You wouldn't have your hands hanging outside like so, because no. then we would get the grip in the incorrect position, which is quite common. Mm. And at impact, of course, you're going to want to return to what's natural, which is how your arms hang from your shoulder. Yeah. So I would always ask people to just let their arms hang, grab the club through the fingers, left thumb on, right hand on, connect it however you feel comfortable, and then place those hands together. And then they're in a very natural position. Yep, that feels really good. Mm. I think the final thing I would mention about the grip is just how weird it feels when you make a change. And you change a tiny thing in the grip and yeah. it feels like you have changed everything. Yes. But that's a good thing, isn't it? Because it shows you are making, making change. I know, well, change your grip, lose a friend. That's what they taught us when we started our instruction. <laughs> but yeah, because it is your connection point. And you, if you've hit thousands of balls in a certain way with the grip out of position and a coach goes and change it, it takes some time. Yeah. So what I would suggest if your grip is out of place, Take some time just gripping the club, letting go and re-gripping. Just get used to holding the club in your hands yeah. and don't leap straight into striking 100 balls with a new feeling in the hands. Great. Just get used to it being there first and then just slowly evolve into ball striking. Well, Tom, I think we can both agree you've got to start at the grip before you progress onto any other aspect within this game. So hopefully some really good tips there to help you get the grip perfect.